also known as ADS for short. This is an interactive platform for young people to amplify Africa's voice through policy discussions about Africa's sustainable development. This year's edition of the ADS focuses on the AU theme of the year, which is arts, culture, and heritage, levers for building the Africa that we want. It is a theme that is anchored in the aspiration five of Agenda 2063 which envisions an Africa with a strong cultural identity, common heritage, shared values, and ethics. This series is organized by the UN Office of the Special Advisor on Africa, in close collaboration with the AUC Commission, Youth Division, and UNESCO. The overall theme focuses on cultural identity and ownership, especially reshaping the mindset. The theme that we're going to be touching on today is sustainable peace for development factoring in history. Now, my name is Janice Kumalo and I am a youth engagement officer and I am also part of the African Union Youth Volunteer 11th cohort. Uh, I would like to begin by introducing a couple of panelists that we have today. We have with us Mr. Ibrahim Sise Shalom, who is a renowned advocate for social justice peace and environmental sustainability. He holds leadership positions with several civil society and youth led regional and international organizations. He currently works full time as the founding executive director of Africa for Arts Peace Initiative, AAPI. It's good to have you on board, Ibrahim. Can I hear um, a shout out from you? Uh, greetings, everybody. Shalom, salam. Thank you so much, Ibrahim. Uh, good to hear your voice and good to see your face. Uh, then we also have my second speaker, who is Serge Hunton, uh, who is a development economist with five years of experience in development and poverty alleviation research in Africa. He is currently a research fellow in the AMAS project at Moai University in Kenya, where he is also researching the economies of refugees in Nairobi. He is also the founder of an innovation hub for immigration research. Uh, Serge, please, could you come in and just give us a little quick hello? Oh, hello, everyone. Thank you, Janet, uh, Janice. Yes, for your in wonderful introduction. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you this. Uh, yeah, here I would say in the evening, but so uh, over there you are in the morning because it's already five p.m. here. It's lovely. Thank you so much. It's good to hear your voices as well. So let's just get into it. Let's just dive in. Uh, so I have a cute few questions here that are lined up. Uh, I'm going to start with Ibrahim. Uh, what do you think you would say is the role of young people in enhancing sustainable peace for development? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Janice. I greet everybody in the name of peace uh, and also in the name of our ancestors uh, that have paved the way for us to be here to speak to you today. Uh, I, I want to start by uh, saying that in 1945, when the United Nations Educational Scientific Cultural Organization, UNESCO, uh, met in London, uh, they had it in mind that in order to achieve global peace and actually champion a culture of peace, they took three things into account, which is one, education, science, and culture. But where I want to harp on is the motto of UNESCO that reads, since wars begins in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. So drawing back to your question, the role of young people when it comes to promoting sustainable peace should begin in the mind, see? In the mind of young people. And how do we do that? How do we achieve that? One is true. Talking about education uh, for, you know, getting your papers and degrees, but education for sustainable peace. That is the first one. And then number two is also the issue of culture. Culture of peace and non-violence and tolerance. Young people are the majority in most African countries. As you know, they make up actually almost 72% of Africa's population. And in every armed conflict, young people are the most active. And when they are idle, they don't have things to do, they are not engaged, then they are forced to be the perpetrators of, uh, of violence. The 
through activities that will stimulate them, art therapy to kind of change their mindset. And then finally, communication, especially social media. Young people can use the power of new and creative media to actually champion the culture of peace. So basically, their role is at three levels. The first level is within the mind, reset of the mindset. And then the second level is within their environment, where they stay, where they are located. And then number three is also transforming and preaching peace using the various tools as social media and also other forms of, uh, of our communication. So these are see, the, young, the role of young people. We are all over. Thank you so much, Ibrahim, for that. What I'm also getting from you is that three-pronged approach of education, a culture for peace, and the use of communication, innovative ways like social media, podcasts, uh, engaging young people where they're at. Uh, thank you so much for that engagement. And I see we are also joined by Ms. Patrida Paul. Uh, Patrida Paul, who is also an African Union Commission Youth Advisory Council member and uh, a member of the Office of the AU Youth for the Envoy. She is a renowned youth gender health advocate and a UNICEF Tanzania influencer for promotion of children's rights. Uh, Patrida, it's really good to have you here. Uh, could you please just come in and give us a quick hello? Thank you, Ms. Janice. Uh, Pat, and I'm going to join you shortly. Uh, I can turn on my video right now, but once uh, the session is proceeding, I'll be able to. Thank you. No worries. Uh, we'll look forward to you joining us in a little bit. Uh, while we wait, let me head over to Serge. Serge, could I ask you, how do you think young people can leverage on arts, culture, and heritage to build sustainable peace? Okay, thank you, Janice. Uh, what I can say uh, <laughs> as my predecessor said so far, the first thing is about education. Because um, said it showed that education is very powerful. When you educate uh, people, they are in, aware of uh, the consequences and uh, the benefits of peace. So what young people can do so far is to educate those who do not have a uh, higher level education or those who are, who are not aware of uh, what is uh, the consequences or the benefits of peace. That's the first thing I would say. So the second one I would talk about uh, the awareness. You should raise awareness, awareness about among the, uh, the lower population. Because most of the time it starts from that level. Right? Conflict, violence starts from that level. For instance, if uh, Boko Haram in you know, northern Nigeria, they want to recruit uh, young people, they always go through, uh, uh, let's say, among those who, who are not well educated, and then they pick them. If I take the case of uh, Ab Shabab, also in uh, East, uh, the Horn of Africa, the same thing again, if you, they want to recruit. Uh, they always go and pick the, the young people, those who are not so well educated. So educated is one. And then the second one is what to raise awareness. They uh, tell them what is the benefit of peace and what is the uh, consequences of uh, peace or of violence, I mean, or conflict. And uh, for instance, if uh, while doing that, we can also give example of uh, a lot of uh, country uh, that has been going through war and uh, their level of uh, development. So when you take, uh, when they every uh, year, when war happen or conflict happen in that, uh, those country, you realize that uh, their level of development is always down. It's always low. If you, I take the case of uh, uh, Burundi, for instance, it's, uh, it's, that country is always among the poorest country. Why? Because of war or because of conflict. So that's what, those are the two things I can talk about that the young people can help to raise or to build sustainable peace. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm just noticing a chat from Matilda. Uh, Matilda, please advise if that is the way that you would like us to move forward. Uh, it's up to you. Please do feel free to come in. 
Uh, Serge, I actually really uh, appreciate the two things that you've mentioned. I think I'm getting the same idea from you and from Ibrahim that education is the most important part in understanding and creating awareness. I'm hearing ed hashtag education for peace, you know, if that's not already a hashtag that's out there in the world. Um, you touched on a topic of awareness and you spoke about the importance of reaching young people at a grassroots level. What do you think are the best ways in order to do that? Um, because, you know, some young people don't have access to social media, don't have access to good internet connectivity. So how do we create awareness for youth who are at a grassroots level who have those problems? Right. Uh, that is a wonderful question because, uh, you know, Africa, that is one of the challenges we have uh, in Africa. Because uh, all of us, uh, all of the, especially when you go to the rural, rural area, uh, we don't have access to internet. Now you don't have access to smartphone or to get on the social media. So the best thing to do is to go, for instance, create uh, small groups. Right? Uh, those people, they are small groups, they can go down deep in the rural area and then uh, gather those young people and then educate them. Right? While educating them, then they can give them some opportunity, uh, opportunity for access into uh, for instance, training, uh, if it's training or uh, vocation training or something access to education, then that will boost their level of uh, uh, getting uh, the sense of uh, peace and uh, development. Okay, thank you so much. That is a, a valuable um, contribution to that level of community engagement and being able to reach the grassroots youth uh, and not leaving anybody behind. Uh, thank you so much. Please could I remind all of our speakers to also turn on your video so we can see your faces and see the emotion behind what exactly it is that you're saying to us. Um, Petrida, are you ready to come in? Patrida, I can see your mic is muted. Are you able to come in right now? Okay, no worries. We'll come back to her as well. Uh, Ibrahim, uh, let me bounce back to you. Uh, how do you think you could say that young people have contributed towards sustainable peace in the past? Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear. Um, let, let, let me start by um, saying that um, we have the African Youth Charter. Uh, uh, and then we also have uh, the Office of the uh, Youth Envoy. Uh, and then we also have regional and national level uh, structures where young people normally would volunteer and they would use that to promote peace. So let me just bring it back to Africa since we're dealing with OSA here. Uh, so in uh, 1960, actually in Guinea Conakry, young people, students came together movement. And one of their idea, and today is what we call the Pan-African Youth Union, P60 in Guinea Conakry organizing. And from there, the movement actually sprang up to you know, national level, regional level. And today we have PYU uh, in almost all countries in Africa. So the contribution of young people actually when it comes to promotion of peace has been a, a very progressive trajectory in Africa. Uh, now we have over 15 Pan-African youth organization focus solely on youth, peace, and security. So that is a huge achievement. Uh, we also have the Youth for Peace program at the African Union level. Uh, and then uh, my organization uh, is called the African Artist Peace Initiative, founded uh, five years ago. And currently today we are in 33 African countries. We basically use the power of arts, culture, and media to champion the culture of peace and non-violence. And every year, uh, we normally would hold uh, a side event on the margins of the AU summit called Arts for Peace Forum. We've done it for five years. Uh, and then we've used that platform to bring really the voices of creative people, young people, closer to the AU, 
And then we don't just stop there. We normally would launch pilot projects. For example, uh, two years ago, we launched a project on silencing all guns in Africa using the power of arts. And it was very successful in South Sudan, Senegal, in Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, and other uh, uh, countries. So this year, uh, as we mark the year of arts, culture, and heritage, we are launching a new program called Cultural Diplomacy in Africa. We want to bring together young people, artists, creatives, uh, private sector together and see how can we use our talents, right, to champion the Africa Agenda 20. the opportunity. Unfortunately, there's Corona, and then we are working online. Because I do believe when our hearts and our minds are connected, that is the easiest way to promote peace. Because peace is not only the absence of war. When young people don't have employment, they are not at peace, you see? So uh, it's, a, it's, it's a chain reaction. But I know very well that the young people in Africa are not only the, the future leaders, they are the present leaders, and that is why we must empower them. Get them into politics so they can change the dynamics. Thank you so much, Ibrahim, for that. Um, I actually think I was present for one of the Art for Peace forums, and I can attest to the fact that it definitely is an engaging and amazing space to be in. And leveraging on that, let me also just ask you, um, when we look into using arts for peace, uh, what do you think the young people really find most engaging? Um, what form of art? Is it perhaps uh, singing? Is it um, visual art? What exactly is the best way for us to find ways to engage with them on that level? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, so, so, so there are three universal languages. Uh, we have mathematics, we have music, and of course, uh, we have art itself as a space. So uh, I would say mainly young people relate mainly with music, as you know, because music kind of brings everything together. It's a rhythm right, is a vibration. Uh, and then what we've been doing uh, here uh, in Addis Ababa when we've been organizing our annual Art for Peace, we normally will organize something called the, the Music for Peace concert. We fly in different artists from different parts of Africa, and then, you know, they, they go to the studio, record a peace song, and then we'll have a free concert. And then we'll, we'll find that, that a lot of young people would normally relate with music because, you know, they, they can move to the rhythm and then they can relate to it. And finally, another quick thing also is movies. Uh, a lot of African people are fond of Nollywood movies, huh? Uh, Oga, Chineke, you know, all those kind of things. So uh, movies brings everything together. Like it brings in the art sector, brings in, you know, uh, sorry, movie brings in music and everything. So in order to make sure we kind of curtail this, we need to be able to use art as also a therapy for healing. We can take art to the refugee camps. They're already affected by conflict. We can take art to the streets to meet, uh, you know, the street people that are already there, with the prostitutes and stuff like that. So I see art as a powerful tool for social transformation and change, including championing and promoting the culture of peace and nonviolence. Thank you so much, Ibrahim. I actually really love the idea of the concept of using music, using art to heal uh, and reconcile in situations and circumstances that have been torn uh, by, by conflict and uh, healing through um, using those things to kind of target marginalized groups as well, as you just described. Uh, let me send this back to Serge. Serge, what do you think about this idea of engaging young people using music, using movies, uh, like our brother Ibrahim just mentioned? What do you think in your experience is the best way to reach young people? And also what kind of, what should we be pushing? Because we all know young people love to listen to music, but what other forms of art should we be introducing into this space with the narrative of trying to encourage people? in development. All right, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Ibrahim, for that uh, wonderful uh, adding value. So what I can say is um, it will be through competition, not competition to compete, but to bring people together. You know, for instance, if I take the case of football, in West Africa, football really, really bring us together. Huh? When there is football, Everywhere there is football, even though we are we are divided in the community, we always come together and uh, participate in the football race or football game. You know? So if we um, through 
singing songs, they can organize uh, a set of competition and you come, you sing, and then there are judges over there and then they judge and then they, 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 they select the best amongst the best. I mean, so if we use that way, I think it can be free, bring peace in the yes. That's what I think, I think so. And also talking about football. So football also is a part of the, the art, I would say. So sports, so it's also help to bring peace. So Thank on you. that, I can say in the past, uh, what young people have done so far, I can give you one example. So I'm also part of a Rota Club International. So in Rwanda, uh, to bring peace, young people, they just, <clears throat> they, they, they were always conflict between the nomads and the sedentarians. What I mean is uh, the farmers and the, uh, those who uh, have the cattle. So there are always that conflict among them. But what they did, they tried to build, to dig a hole mm, where so that the animal can cross that line and come to the farm. It was simple, but very sustainable. When, once they did that, they dig the hole, and then the animals stop coming to the farm, and the conflict stops. So it's also a wonderful idea, and uh, we recognize them that time. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving us that amazing example of how sometimes a simple um, thing can actually fix a bigger, bigger problem. Um, I, I would like to also now hand over to Patrida. Patrida, um, thank you for joining the conversation. Uh, let me just give you a quick uh, question on how do you think young people can maximize African indigenous approaches uh, for peace building? Thank you so much, Ms. Janice, and really honored to be part of this session today. Actually, uh, there are a lot of several ways that young people can be part um, of the peace process, especially when we look at the indigenous communities. Earlier, before I had a message, Ibrahim Tese talk about what um, the Office of Envoy has done um, to actually um, fight peace um, and security, especially from the youth length. So what can they really uh, do especially the indigenous community to advance peace and security um, in the different societies they are in. This can be through different interventions whereby they can partner up uh, with different youth-led institutions, youth-led platforms, but also we have the UN agencies which are doing a lot of work on peace and security, but also institutions per se that are doing uh, peace and security. Uh, but apart from that, uh, how can um, uh, we leverage the government uh, itself to help the indigenous community? So there are a lot of policies in place um, that do not, not favor majority of the indigenous community. So through different advocacy uh, efforts uh, to ensure we have favorable laws and policies uh, within the community level, within different countries, this can be a starting point to actually ensure we have that conversation um, on the peace process. And this, this actually will help uh, that particular community that is mostly uh, left behind or we have issues of identification that can also be a challenge uh, to indigenous communities that still is a main barrier to even have their voice. work with young people they voices and uh, they can actually uh, be part of driving change within their societies thank you so much Patrida um, I think the most important things that I'm hearing from you is uh, we need to be able to leverage the government to be able to uh, create awareness to young people and the use of these different indigenous approaches and also partnering with a lot of youth led uh, uh, networks of young people to push these approaches forward on peace building. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so uh, I wanted to just also get into a quick round fire of questions. Uh, more to get to know you all personally. Um, maybe let me start with uh, Serge. 
Uh, what would you say you are currently either reading or being that we were also discussing music, what is really the thing that you've been listening to um, most recently? It could be a podcast, it could be a specific artist. Uh, let us know. So I can say podcast because I listen to podcast every morning. So I have an app that send me every morning the podcast about so general culture. I love that. I love that. You know, our generation is quickly um, getting into this space where we're kind of engaging, not just with music, but listening to podcasts to get us started in the morning. I know I do the exact same thing. Uh, Ibrahim, uh, do you want to answer the same question? What are you currently reading? What is on your Kindle? What podcasts are you listening to lately? Uh, uh, different uh, news online. Uh, offline. Uh, I also love to read, so I've been reading a lot of books uh, and also I've uh, been writing myself. Actually, I'm currently writing a book on uh, interfaith dialogue for peace, and I'm using Ethiopia as a case study. So I'm busy with that because we need to prove to uh, you know countries like Nigeria and other places where Christians, Muslims, and you know fighting each other. You know, so I'm I'm working on that right now. That is very interesting. We'll be looking out for it. You know, when are we supposed to be expecting this book to come out? Uh, hopefully by uh, before December, it will be out. <laughs> it's going we'll, to be my we'll first keep, book. So, so yeah. We will keep yeah. you to that. In December, we're all going to be all looking for it. Uh, Patrida, uh, let me also ask you a completely different question. Um, what would you say is the most rewarding experience that you have had in a job? I'd say the most rewarding experience uh, that I've had in a job uh, would ideally be around, um, actually, I, I'll keep it in the opportunity to meet different young people uh, from across Africa and outside of Africa, because uh, with that ability to actually meet different young people from different parts of the continent and the world, I've managed to actually learn from them on what they're actually doing and actually to connect with them and form partnerships on different interventions that they're also working on. So I think that personally will be my most rewarding experience um, in my line of work. Okay, so let me ask you another follow-up question. Uh, the same question that I was asking the other panelists, what are you currently reading or what podcasts are you listening to? Or even what music have you been listening to lately? So what I'm currently reading uh, is Unwrapped, the story of a shepherd. So this is a book uh, that was written by Dr. Abraham Nzaba, uh, one of my colleagues that I, uh, I work with. So it's really an exciting book uh, that uh, tells the story of um, different changes of life and different issues. But from a podcast, I would say is uh, the, the current podcast I'm listening to is Why Lead Others by Ben Oden. So it has a series of different in influential young people, influential elders, that are actually telling the stories on a uh, leadership journey uh, in different fields, whether it's in entrepreneurship, education, um, and um, things within the fashion industry or in the financial literacy or the tech world. And I'll keep um, my favorite music that I'm listening to so far is Vani. So he's a Tanzanian artist. Um, a really good song, I think, that's currently trending. Thank you so much, Petrida, for all of those different plugins. I think all of us are also going to try and look for this podcast and go and listen to the artists that you mentioned. Thank you so much to you and to all of our panelists. This has been such an engaging and tintillating conversation. Uh, I would like to just end off by saying thank you to everybody who organized and everybody for attending. And this has been amazing. So uh, over from me to you guys, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.